In this lecture, you'll learn how to perform pointing time restore, how to restore a deleted database, and how to configure long-term backup retention. So the first thing we're going to do is restore our database to a point in time. To achieve this, select databases, select the database that you want to restore, select restore, ensure you select point in time. The other option is long-term backup retention. If I select long-term backup retention, I don't have any backups to choose from. So I'm just going to revert to point in time. When you select the calendar, you'll see the latest time you can restore to. So here I'm going to select May the 1st. For the time, I'm going to keep it at 7 p.m. Here, you can change the database name. By default, you will have the extension of the time that you are restoring it to. So here you can see it say, here it says 1900, which is 7 p.m. And please keep in mind that the time you are restoring is in UTC. So make sure that you convert to your local time. Scroll down, we are not using an elastic pool, so select no. For compute and storage, we are going to be keeping the default settings. For our backup storage redundancy, we are going to be keeping the default as geo redundant backup storage. Then select review and create. Please keep in mind that when you perform a restore, it will not allow you to overwrite the existing database, but it will create a new database. So here I'm going to select create. The deployment is in progress and this will take a few minutes to complete and this will always be dependent on the size of your backups. If we're supposed to head over to SQL Server Management Studio now, then we'll see that the database is in a restoring state. To expand databases and you can see that the database is restoring. Now let's do a quick refresh to check if the restore has been completed. Let's do a quick refresh to check if the database restore has been completed. So the restore is still in progress. Now I am going to delete the AVW to database. Select OK. Now let's go to the portal. Let's close the deployment page. Select the server instance. On the data management, select deleted databases. So currently, the deleted database is not being shown. So this will take some time, about 30 minutes, before it's reflected under the deleted database section. Now let's go to the backups option. So by default, backups are retained for 7 days. By default, backups are kept for 7 days. But in a case where you need to keep your database backups for a longer period, you need to enable long-term retention. So to achieve this, select retention policies, search the backups, and then retention policies. Select the database that you want to configure the retention policy for. So here you can see that point in time recovery is 7 days. The differential backup happens every 24 hours. We don't have any weekly long-term retention monthly or yearly. So to configure these policies, say configure policies, and to increase the point in time restore from 7 days, we can scroll this pointer here up to a maximum of 35 days. We can also change the frequency at which we take differential backup. You have the option to choose between 12 hours and 24 hours. So I'm going to keep the default as 24 hours. For the weekly long term retention backups, you can specify how long you want to keep the weekly backups for. So for example, if I want to keep it for one week, then I specify one. And then for the drop down section, I ensure that I keep one week. Now for the monthly backups, keep the first backup for each month. So I can say I want to keep it for two weeks, three months, or even a year. Or if I want, I can specify days. So I'm going to say, I'm going to keep it for two months. And for annual backup, right? I want to keep my annual backup for seven years. So this will be dependent on your organization policy, how long they want to be able to keep a backup for. So from the drop down, I'll select years and then specify which one of the weekly backup you would like to keep, whether it's week one, which would be January or week 52, which is the last week of the year, and then select apply. Are you sure you want to apply these policies to the selected databases? Select yes. Now the deployment, now the deployment is in progress. 
the deployments were completed so select go to resources so from the resources you can access the server now let's select backups let's select retention policies now we can see that our long-term retention has been configured successfully so it would keep the weekly backup for one week the monthly backup for two months and the yearly backup will be kept for seven years now let's go back to deleted databases now we can see that the deleted database is being reflected so to restore the deleted database you would select the database and then you can select the point in time restore no long-term retention is available so no backups will be shown so let's select point in time and again for the time you can go back to seven days and because the retention policy for this database was the default of seven days we can go back to a maximum of seven days so if i select the 30th i'm going to keep the default time then select review and create then select create the restore will be initiated now let's go back to management studio now let's refresh databases again this has been running for a while now and the AVW2 database restore has been completed. Now when I refresh, I am not seeing the Udemy database. So let's head over back to the portal to check on any possible errors that occurred while restoring the database. So let's minimize. On the portal, select the notifications icon. Select more events in the activity log. Scroll down to the field deployment. Expand to view the details. On the message it says that the resource operation completed with terminal provisioning state failed. This error message is not particularly helpful. However, you can always raise a service request with Microsoft if you really want to find out what caused the failure. These issues will happen from time to time and when they do, you need to create a support request with Microsoft to resolve the same.